Michael Wilson, uh, IG is much on the go. But the Philadelphia side, Rashard, can you please take us into the live channel with Brandon Rush? This is a clutch and some shit shooting for Alice. How are you doing? How are you doing? Go to what, huh? Uh, well, we do good to play up in, uh, in the timeout. We go, who's going to try to run a pick and roll, get Reggie rolling to the rim, make the defense collapse uh, to pick up Reggie and hope they have me wide open for the three. But <clears throat> Rush stuck with me. Mario was patient on the dribble. He dribbled on the best. He came back. Uh, Rush had his eyes on Mario. You can see me cut back to a three-point line. And, you know, I got the wide open shot. He was closing pretty quick. You know, I saw him coming. Uh, I just wanted to get it, just try to get it up to get a good attempt at it. Uh, but it went in. You know, and I'm just happy that we won that game. <clears throat> Carl Thomas say with Paul Sports, he's gonna say both. Carl Thomas, that's what I'm saying. This question is from Jared Um, You know, your team was trouble, but you know, uh, through defense, they came back uh, uh, about an iron 10 point uh, deficit. How do you feel about the team's defense, you know, being as though you are one of the greatest defense players in the league? Well, we started off uh, slow, and then we started struggling. And all I told them is that when you struggle on offense, defense gets you back in game. And uh, the second half, that's what they did. They just buckled down. They just started uh, really, really hustling, getting rebounds, and limiting the team, the other team, to uh, possessions. But we start defending, defending guys and stop fouling, and we're just playing and then blocking shots and helping. We're a good team when we we together. And that's what we did. We got together and we played great defense and look what happens. We went on a 14 or a 15-0 run and we won the basketball game. Hey Gary, uh, Kevin Durant signed with the Nets today. And you attacked with you and Carl Malone got that stone, I guess, in 2003. Does that bring back memories of what it was like for you back in 2003 and how things have changed? It seems like there's a lot of tension with the NBA team. Yeah, well, it's a lot of tension because these guys are younger and they go on the basketball teams. Uh, we didn't go to basketball teams when we were young like this. You know what I'm saying? Me and, me and Carl was at the end of our career. We were trying to get a championship and we signed with the Lakers. We, you know, I wouldn't have never, after I lost to Michael Jordan in 96, I wouldn't have never went to go sign with Michael Jordan. That's just the way it is right now. This is what they want to do. They want to team up with their buddies and their, their friends. And that's the way the game goes. You know, uh, he's always had a childhood dream of being in New York. So that's what he wanted to do. So he went to New York. So uh, I'm happy for him. Uh, you know, this is just the way the era goes. A lot of two players are changing teams right now and doing a lot of things. The NBA is going to be very interesting in the next couple of years. Just to piggyback off that question, what do you think that just um, does to the culture of I think for the guys, the two guys up here that, uh, that was my rookies, uh, I think they don't they don't like that. Uh, I think they're in a different era, and I'm in a different era. Uh, I don't believe in teaming up with your buddy. Um, forget your buddy. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care about your buddy. Your buddy is trying to be where you at. You know what I'm saying? But it is with this AAU stuff now. That's what you grow up around. You grow up around these guys and you play with each other. So when you're playing with each other at 14 and then y'all knowing that y'all uh, McDonald's All-Americans and stuff like that, what y'all do is, y'all say, man, one day we're going to play in the NBA together. So we're going to team and do that. And now the rules are so changed where you don't sign two-year deals, one-year deals and become uh, a free agent. It always makes it happen. You know, and then when you do that, the money is so big that you can do two years and then opt out and then get a big contract and still get a lot of money. So it's a very big difference. In my area, man, we can sign seven-year deals, eight-year deals, and that was what we were getting. We can't say anything about that. My era was a long time ago. This is a different era. It is what it is, man. My era was two to three decades ago, so I don't really care about it. That's their era. This is their era. Uh, all I can do is just say, tell my mama I wish you would have had me a little later. Right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the big three here, so we got some big three players. Yeah. Let's try to focus yeah, some yeah, questions yeah. on the big three guys. Can we, yeah, yeah. Can we start asking NBA questions? Yeah. Because the NBA, they don't ask them no big three questions by the way. You get what I'm saying? So let's stop, you know, we spent five minutes talking about that. We just had a good game. We just yeah. won a good game. Came down by 13, 15 points. We talking about some damn free shit. Shit, we ain't get no damn money from that. <laughs> 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 All right, we ain't saw that big three, man. We just beat um, whoever the hell that was. Anyway, we just beat them. All right, let's get the big three questions. Let's go, big three questions. All right, big three questions. Um, this is to Reggie Evans and to Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders, you had a key moment in the game. You actually blocked Andre your own shot. Can you talk about that and how that changed the game? And to uh, Reggie Evans, you also had to bang it out with uh, Greg Odin a lot. How was that going into the pain actually battling out with him and wearing him down so you wouldn't get 
Um, 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 Red, good dude, um, good player. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, I ain't, I ain't really play my A game today. You know what I'm saying? Just to be honest with you, GP can tell you, Rashad can tell you, I ain't really play up to my standards and stuff like that. But at the same time, as far as like just being there for my team, cheering them on, making sure they're doing all the little bit of things for them. To overcome his victory, you know what I'm saying? So um, it was tough playing. It was, it was cool playing against Greg, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, good job, Greg. Uh, yes, sir. Brady, how do you want to say? Not a question. Not a question. <laughs> <laughs> block shot. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of fouling, so I've been trying to get that block, so I'm happy I finally got it. I can calm down now oh, yeah. and uh, take my time. But, you know, Coach told me to get in there and just be long, you know, and uh, be wide, uh, be active. Uh, that's what I try to do. Get myself into the rhythm. Um, how important is it to do the dirty work, do the things that don't usually show up on the stat sheet to make sure you can come back in games like this when you're on the trail? Shoot, sure, that's what kept me in the league for a long time. You know, that's why, you know, my teammates, they, um, me coming to the league, that's why they love me so much because they ain't have to do some of that stuff. You know, they ain't have to worry about the little things like that. that you know what I'm saying? So everybody got a role, role, you know what I'm saying? So with the big three, everybody got a role. Like, like, um, like GP telling Larry, I need you to go out there and be yourself. I need you to go out there and block shot. I need you to go out there and uh, rebound the ball. I need you to go out there and roll. You, you know, so um, same thing with me. Even though my role changed a little bit, you know what I'm saying? If I G want me to score the ball and I'll uh, be more aggressive on that, but at the same time, it don't change from, you know, diving on the loose ball, um, you know, setting good screens and being taking pride on doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it feels good to get our teammates open, make moves, shot. That's a good feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's just like an assist. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's a part of it, but I embrace it, and um, that's that's the way of us winning. Thanks, uh, all that sports there. Thank you. No doubt. One more question. Mike Ortiz Jr. from DYST now. Knowing that, you know, I want to get the comparison here because with an NBA game, you know, four quarters or time limits and stuff like that, and coming back from a game, it would be easier. But knowing that, you know, there's a final score, there's a target score of maybe 50, but being down, you know, 10, 11 points, is it different trying to come back knowing that there's a final score versus a time limit? Is it easier? Take me through that. I would probably say it's difficult coming back. You don't, in, in this game, you can't, you don't want to dig a hole for yourself early. Uh, especially, I think we was fortunate enough to get into the penalty, uh, get a free throw and able to get the ball back. And that was the way we just kind of get ourselves back into the game. And then when we did score, they got the ball, was able to play D, defense and then score again. But uh, in half court, three on three, you want, you want to try your best to stay in the game or, or, or keep the lead because it's hard to come back. I think it's just, um, me personally, um, I think um, it's, it's kind of good because of now, um, now it's like, okay, cool, we got to tighten up the defense. You get what I'm saying? Like, okay, cool. We down. They got 10 more points, so it's like, okay. it's just urgency. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of such an urgency. So, number one, we can't put ourselves in that predicament to be in a such an urgency. You know what I'm saying? We had we had practice yesterday, and we were scrimmage against you know on um, the first team against second team. And the first team, the second team just came out there and just just fine, you know, just killing us. And you know, at the last minute, we kind of had to wake up, you know, and um, kind of pull through. So we can't keep on putting ourselves in that predicament to to come back, but um. It's challenging, but we did it last year, so we want to go um, get rattled and stuff like that about it. What does a comeback win like that do for your guys' confidence? I mean, I can already see it. You guys are very confident. I think it does a lot for the confidence, especially uh, when you're not making shots in the game and you make a big shot to win it. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's, 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 a, it's a confidence booster, especially going into next weekend, you know, feeling good. Uh, individually and as a team going into next weekend too and though I think right now we're starting the season off great we just gotta continue to take it weekend at one weekend at a time. All right, thank you so much. All right, sir.